where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Promises fulfilled. That's what God does. In the Old Testament, he made many promises and prophecies, many of which we see fulfilled in the New Testament through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Yesterday, we talked about the first third of the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew 1, 1 through 17. We stopped at David, a man after God's own heart. Here we come to another woman in the genealogy. And though it doesn't record her name, we know her as Bathsheba. Why does it call her the wife of Uriah? I think this is to emphasize the sin that she and David committed. Yet this sin led to their union and to Solomon's birth. Even in Jesus' genealogy, the Lord didn't pick perfect people. Of course, if he had, Jesus wouldn't have had a genealogy since he was the only perfect one in it. But God chose prostitutes, Gentiles, wicked kings, liars, adulterers. If he allowed these to be privileged to be part of the Messiah's lineage, don't you think he would allow us the privilege of working in his kingdom? No matter what you've done or what you've experienced, God can not only use you and his kingdom, but he can use your sins, your negative experiences, all for his glory. It's an amazing concept that reminds us of God's mercy and faithfulness to us. So God puts Solomon in this genealogy. The next name I recognize is Jehoshaphat. I love to say that name, Jehoshaphat. He was one of the rare good kings that Judah had. Second Chronicles 17 says, The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals. Therefore, the Lord established his kingdom in his hand and gave him riches and honor in abundance. When his kingdom was attacked, you know what Jehoshaphat did? He immediately sought the Lord. God told him, Don't be afraid. It's my battle. And Jehoshaphat told the people, Then all of them worshipped and praised the Lord before he'd even done anything yet. The next thing they knew, their enemies had killed each other and they were delivered. The next name I recognize is Josiah. He's famous for all of his reforms. His father and grandfather were wicked kings, and by the time he got to the throne, the temple had been trashed and there were altars to idols all over Judah. He had the temple fixed up, and in the process found a scroll of the law. Being horrified at how far the nation was from being what God wanted them to be, he got rid of the altars and the other gods, and reestablished true worship in Jerusalem, leading the people to follow the Lord. After his death, however, the country fell back into its old sinful ways, and God packed them off to Babylon, where they were captive for seventy years. Upon returning, no kings ever came to the throne again. But had there been, Joseph would have been in line for secession. Imagine that, Joseph, a poor carpenter living in Nazareth. Yes, Jesus' adopted father would have handed down the right of kingship to Jesus. Mary's genealogy, which is in Luke, was straight from David, too, except through a different line. So either way, Jesus had the clear right to be the true king of the Jews through imperfect, normal people that God privileged to be in the family of the Messiah. Do you have this privilege? Are you in his family too? You certainly can be. And God can use you, yes, you, to do amazing things for him. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to share a treasure God has given you by doing an episode, please contact us. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you'll find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.